I hope the previous videos helped you understand the depth buffer. Now let's move on to the color buffer. I've already mentioned the color buffer. It is simply a two-dimensional array of pixels, each one storing a red, a green, and a blue value. There's also alpha, but again, I'm ignoring alpha. So RGB for all these locations inside of our color buffer. Obviously, it's going to take some time if I'm going to fill in just four of them. Thankfully, we have the graphics card to fill in zillions of them over here for us, so we don't need to worry about that. I want to demonstrate this color buffer, teach a little bit more about the color buffer, explain how that works. And I'm just going to write some code. I'm going to do some stuff, and let's witness some behavior, and let's see if you can figure out that behavior, and then I'll explain what's going on after that. First thing I'm going to do though is come down here to our paint GL. I'm getting tired of scrolling over the shader stuff so I'm actually going to control X this, cut it and move it closer to where we send the data down to open GL. Let me scroll out there a little bit. And then down here I'm just going to get rid of our draw elements for a minute. I'm going to change our code up so instead of drawing those two triangles like we were doing. I'm going to try to draw a triangle like this and a triangle like this and a triangle like this. So I just have this constant steady stream of triangles that move across the screen like this. Ooh, he was kind of fat there, but hopefully you get the idea. And here's the tricky part. I want to draw one new triangle every time we paint. All right, before we were just setting up the triangles and drawing them. And, and now I actually want to be a little bit dynamic and say, okay, on every new frame, I want to add another triangle to the screen. Okay, that's my end goal. Let's, let's first get rid of these two triangles that we are drawing. Hopefully you're turned up to high definition. I think we'll keep the buffer info, though, there. Yeah, we're going to need that. Let's just get rid of the triangle data. And I'm actually going to get rid of the indices. Remember to draw indices, we had to call GL draw elements. I'm going to go back to GL draw arrays. Generally, I won't do this, but for this demonstration, I think it works just fine. We're getting a red squiggly here. It's saying, hey, I don't know what verts, verts are. That's because we just deleted it. And so we need to tell OpenGL something else about our buffer data. Now, remember, when we generate a buffer object, here we go, this is our buffer object. This object just holds properties about the buffer. It doesn't actually store the data. The data is stored in an actual buffer. It's an array of bytes, hopefully on the graphics card, but that's up to OpenGL to maintain. Then this buffer object keeps track of the actual buffer. Well, in the case where I'm trying to draw dynamic triangles, here's a triangle, and here's another triangle, there's another triangle. Every frame I want to add a new triangle to our buffer. We have to take a different approach with these buffer objects. Instead, I'm going to change the call down here for size. Uh, let's just start out. I'll just say, hey, 1,000 bytes. You know what? Let's do 10,000 bytes. And then here, it wants us to pass the data. I'm going to pass null. I guess I could type zero there. I can't tell you how many times I've seen programmers fight over whether we should type zero or null or null pointer, I think it is. Anyway, I, whatever, null. And when I do that, OpenGL, it sees we're passing null for the pointer to the data and says, oh, okay, well, you don't have any data for me to copy, but I'm still going to allocate this many bytes. All right, it's up to us as the programmers, the client programmers, to fill in these bytes later, which we're going to do. Every time I run a paint, I want to add another triangle and add another triangle. And you can see OpenGL paints a lot better than I do. I'm getting, I'm kind of taking this approach like that. Anyway, don't blink. And the triangles are gone. Okay, every time we run paint, I want to send another triangle down to OpenGL. I think we're done with draw elements for now. I'm going to get rid of that. And let's just stub out a function here. Send another try to open GL. How's that for a function name? That's kind of long. Copy this, uh, void, and go like so. Now let me get the open GL window back up here. Let's see if I can get this to 
build. There we go. There's the OpenGL window. Probably done with that as well. Let me just get rid of the buffer object too. If you recall from previous videos, I've drawn this 10 zillion times. Plus 1 in the Y is right here. Negative 1 in the Y is right there. Here's negative 1 in the X and positive 1 in the X. And when I draw another triangle, I want to draw it from here to here to here and here to here to here. What vertex positions do I need to send in? Well, this spot, this location right here, this is negative 1 in the X and one in the Y, like so. This spot right here is negative one in the X and zero in the Y. And then let's just guess where this is roughly. It looks like I'm about a tenth of the way here. So we'll say this, this location right here is negative 0.9 in the X and it's one in the Y. All right, well the next triangle, its location, let's change colors here. Uh, for its vertice right here, I could just reuse this one. It's this exact same thing. Negative 0.9 in the X and 1 in the Y. And this location here is negative 0.9 in the X and 1 in the Y. This vertice. And then this one right here, this is going to be negative 0.8 in the X and 1 in the Y. So hopefully you're seeing a pattern here. With the y's, we go from negative 1, negative 0.9, negative 0.8. So every time we draw a triangle, I want to move a tenth of the way across the screen. But other than that, the rest of the coordinates are, are nailed down because we're always 1 in the y for all these vertices up here, and then we're always 0 in the y for the vertices down here. All we got to worry about is, hey, move the, move the x over. 0.1, move the x over 0.1, move the x over 0.1, and we'll get vertex locations like that. So let's see if we're going to write some code that does exactly that. I think I'll come to the top of the file here, say const float x delta, that's the distance we're going to move. And I believe I said that was 0.1. Every time, every time we draw a new triangle, we're going to move over to the right one. Let's keep track of how many triangles we have, num tries. Well, I'll initialize that to zero. Technically, I don't need to since I'm smashing it out here in, in global space. The compiler actually initializes global variables to zero. But that's another topic for another day. And then let me bring the window back up just for my reference, and it may help you as well to have the window here. Send another try. To open GL, well, if you recall our triangles before I deleted all that data, we had six vertices, no, we had three vertices and six attributes per vertice. Let me just try to stub this out here. GL float, uh, this try, array gets, uh, here's the positional information, control C, V, 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 and the color information. So. Here is one vertex. We need two more vertices. Control C and Control V. Come on. <sighs> Formatting. And let's make this triangle. Put new lines back in there. Let's make this triangle red, just like our previous triangle. All red, all red, all red. And then the Z values. Well, we're not going to mess with Z or depth in this case, so we'll just leave that alone. We're not drawing one triangle over the other. We're going to move them down the screen to the right. But we do need to mess with the X and the Y. So let me... Oh, way too big. You know, maybe we don't, don't need that on the screen. Maybe that's just becoming a pain. Let's pretend this is our screen. And I'll draw our first triangle here. In fact, I'll draw it a little larger. One vertex to the upper left, one down here, and one up here. So this vertex location will be the current X that we're on. I think right here I'll say const gl float. And again, when I say gl float, that's just a type def for float. This try X gets negative one. Remember the X, Y here. Here's y here's x that's a poor x but i want to start out at negative one and then i want to 
add the current triangle. Do we have a variable to keep track of the? Yeah, we have number tries. So add num tries plus x delta. All right, so if we have zero tries, then we're going to be here. If we have one try, that's going to move us up. Or not plus no, x delta times x delta. If we times y x delta, that'll move us to this location. And then the next one will be here, so on and so forth. And we'll move on down the screen. So that's good. This try x will be right here. We'll make this the upper left one. So back and then up one would be 1 in the y. Uh, and then this this one there, that's going to be this try x plus x delta. Right, it's this tries x plus our x delta. And again, it's 1 in the y. And then this one right here is this try x, but then it's going to be 0 in the y. It's this vertex right there. So I think we're good for that. We need to send this data down to OpenGL. Remember we said OpenGL create some memory for us, but we didn't actually send data down. Now we need to send data down to that buffer. So there's another call for that, gl sub buffer data. I'm going to put data into a subset or a piece of the buffer, not the entire buffer. It could be the entire buffer, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. What's our target buffer? It's the buffer that's bound to the gl array binding point. The offset, well, what's the offset going to be? Let's Let's look at that. Pretend this is our buffer array. Okay, this is the array that OpenGL created for us when we said GL buffer data. There's a 10,000 of them. I'm obviously not going to draw 10,000, but I will draw a few more. Don't blink. There we go. We have our buffer, our nice, clean, allocated buffer from right here. I want to send data down to the buffer. And where do we want to send it to? This is the offset. This is where we're saying, hey, the data I'm about to send to you start at this location in the array. Well, what's the offset going to be? For zero, it's, it's easy to calculate zero. That's just zero. But for the next try, let me draw our next triangle right here. What would that offset be? How could we calculate the offset? Well, how many vertices does a triangle have? A triangle has three vertices. And how large are those vertices? Well, how many elements are there in each vertice? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So that we need to multiply. We have three vertices times six floats per vertice. And then how big is a float? We need to know in bytes how large a float is. Well. I know it's just four bytes on my machine, but we're going to be a little bit better than that. We'll say size of size of float. All right, now if you don't like my handwriting, uh, you can grab a mouse and try drawing. I've tried a tablet before, I just couldn't stand it. So three vertices times six floats per vertice times the size of a float. Well, that's just going to be a headache to track. So. Let's let's make those constants. All right, let's at least make them constants. I don't want to put too many magic numbers into our program. So const uint num vertices per try. That's three. Const const uint num floats per vertice is six. And then the size of a float is just the size of a float. I'm not going to make that a constant. Let's erase all this and actually go down to our code here. The offset will be the number of tries that we have times the size of a triangle. You know what? We didn't define the size of a triangle. Const uint triangle size. Let's do byte size. Just so we have units on there because a triangle could be three vertices and vertices is another unit of measure. It's going to be num vertices per try. Let me get this off the screen for a minute. Times num floats per vertice times the size of a float like so. So that's triangle byte size. So the offset into this array is going to be the number of tries we have times the triangle size, triangle byte size. 
And then the size. What's the size of the data we're going to send down? Well, it's the it's the size of this thing, which actually should be the exact same size as triangle byte size. I could say size of this array, or I could just say triangle byte size. Let's be consistent and say triangle byte size. And then the actual data is this array that I've defined on the stack there. So this try. I'll do like that. And then when we're done, we need to say num tries plus plus. We've just added another try to the screen. I think that's probably good. So send another try to OpenGL. That sends the data down. I think we should be good. Let's let's actually step through this a couple times just make sure we're good. We won't draw anything. Oops. We won't draw anything, but we'll send another try to OpenGL uh, every time we paint, which is quite often actually. I'm going to build this, run this. Of course, it's still open in the background. Okay, build succeeded. Run this again. Uh, get rid of the call stack. Okay, we're in here for the first time. Let's step through it. You can see the array here. Looks like we got ones and ones. And negative 0.89, which is, well, negative 0.89999. That's close enough to negative 0.9 right there. Send that data down to OpenGL, which essentially fills in, what is this size anyway? 72 bytes. So the first triangle took up the first 72 bytes of the buffer. I don't even think I have that many bytes in my array. We'll say it goes to right here. So there's the first triangle. And then number of tries will go to 1. And we're good to go. I'm going to hit F5, hit the breakpoint again because another paint occurred. Step through all of this. Now the second try, see how his X positions are at 0.89. 0.89, but then his far right vertice is at 0.79. So that's good. We send that data down to OpenGL. At this offset, that offset is number of tries times triangle byte size, which is 72, which is where we left off, isn't it? This is, this is the end of the triangle, the first triangle we put in the array. And now we're putting the second triangle. Let's do green for this one. The second triangle will take up the next 72 bytes off the screen like so. So that's pretty good. Every time we paint, there's another paint. Every time we paint, we just make three new vertices, send them down to OpenGL, and fill in our buffer like so. So I think I think we're good. There's one little thing bugging me though. I just kind of put this magic 1000 in there. We need we need some sort of maximum. Let's do const uint max triangles. I'll just stick with tries. Max tries, we'll say is 20, and then down here I can say the buffer needs to be the size of max tries times the triangle byte size. All right, that's a little bit more specific. And then down here, when we say send another try to OpenGL, I'll just say if num tries is equal to the max tries then forget it. We're not going to send anything to OpenGL. That will go beyond the bounds of our buffer. Okay, next video, let's, let's actually run this and see if it works.